Hello and welcome to week four in biopsychology. And here we are, week four, chapter four, the development of the brain. Now we start with this study looking at the in utero development of the brain, the, the, the actual cellular distribution and, um, and neuron migration and specialization and all that stuff. Uh, so fascinating aspects. If you look at the timeline in terms of critical periods within our gestation, the nervous system is always in critical development. So there's always lots of neurological things going on uh, right up into our birth and after. And part of this really kind of looks at that both, looks at brain development from the perspective of in utero development, getting us ready to exist in the world, and then further development, such as when we're learning, when we're unlearning things and relearning things a different way, rerouting the pathways in our brain, the whole enterprise of brain plasticity, which is really taking a hold in the world of psychology having to do with addiction, the development of healthy habits, those kinds of things, uh, PTSD, all of these things are subject to the work that we're doing in brain plasticity. Now that we understand a little bit more that those hardwired pathways in our brain, that for people with poor habits, addictions and PTSD, really lock them in, are changeable. With effort, with luck, and you know, all of that, but we do understand that these pathways can be changed. So the quiz, I actually kind of look really deeply into the notion of uh, the kinds of changes that happen as a result. Not only it happens throughout our gestation, but then into our lives, these, the products of our continuing development of the brain to neurological growth processes, collateral sprouting, and disuse supersensitivity. Simply asking you to define those. Let's just take those two terms, write out your own definition to them. Your definition should be in your own words, and they should reflect a deep understanding of the topic. In fact, when you look at it, the idea of having you define things in your own words is to look at the definition with the, in your sources, and think about it enough that you can put it in your own words. The actual thinking about it creates new neurological pathways. You're actually engaging in that. To kind, of, kind of try to feel that. You're looking at the definition for collateral sprouting. Like, I'm going to put this in my own words. In that thinking process, you are actually constructing new neurological pathways. Very fascinating stuff. Now... Do that for those two questions. So collateral sprouting and disuse supersensitivity. The assignment is like a lab, and it has to do with brain plasticity. And that's the ability for the brain to rewire itself and then switch back to its natural wiring in real time. So there's a choice that I put into this lab, one of the experiences involves listening to audio. The other one is a visual experience. So you're looking at those two different sensation systems. The reason why I want to have two of them is in fact, the visual one can be nauseating. It's a, you fill up your screen with a fractal design that keeps on moving in and you're watching that for 10 minutes. Not everybody likes to do that. And uh, it's a little, it's a little weird to do that. So the, the audio one is also a really interesting um, way of experiencing brain plasticity. When you expose yourself to a particular stimulus for a while that your brain gets used to processing information from that. So when you shut down that experience, it applies that model to the real world and you start to see things different. You start to hear things different. It's only temporary and then it starts to switch back. So the results of these uh, experiments um, are described in the course book and the questions going along with them. Now, this is one assignment. 
you pick either one, whichever one, you, that's the minimal. If you want to do both and write about both, knock yourself out. This is a greater experience of that. If you want to do the visual one and the auditory one, if you want to get your family involved and have them do all this stuff, I don't care. In fact, that would be wonderful. Get more people to do this, share this. This is a fun experiment about how we can actually experience the idea of brain plasticity. So that's what's due this week. We're looking at chapter four, looking at the definitions in your own words, well thought out, and the creation of actual neurological tissue in your brain for collateral sprouting and disuse, super sensitivity, and then purposefully exposing yourself to the experience of brain plasticity. Cool stuff. So that's it for this week. I look forward to the quiz and the assignment. There's uh, unless I've missed something in my notes, I'm not seeing a discussion. So if there is a discussion and I haven't talked about it in this week, I might have made a mistake on my notes. If there is a discussion, we'll just have fun in that discussion. You can look it up. But it's not in my notes, so I'm not going to talk about it right now. So um, you're on your own for that one. But enjoy that, these labs. They're really fun. I've done them numerous times in class and uh, they can be a little freaky, but they are way better if you do them with headphones on for the audio and then filling your screen, your computer screen with the visual one and like leaning in and just experiencing that thing for 10 minutes. If, you, if your stomach can survive that, really try to do that one. And then when you back out of that and look at the world, it's a little freaky. So enjoy the freakiness. All right, so I'll see you later. Have a great week.